I'm inside and I saw The Boys Season 3, Episode 3, Barbary Coast. It is directed by Julian Holmes, written by Geoff Ali and Anselm Richardson. And if you haven't seen this episode, I will spoil it for you. This episode starts and we're following the aftermath of Homelander's speech about how he's better than everyone and he can just do whatever he wants and it seems like middle america is loving it unsurprising i'm i'm not really surprised by that fact also the coasts less people like less of the youth specifically on the coasts like him and i don't like homelander oh boy he sounds like a maniac in that speech but I totally get why people would like Homelander. I feel like Homelander appeals to the want for power and ultimate freedom. And he's just like, I can do whatever I want. And he's speaking for people who can't necessarily do whatever they want. So there is two reactions to that. So I think the people who are feeling the most oppressed in their life, they're going to be more so on Homelander's side. This, of course, inflates Homelander's ego, and he's like, well, people are gonna have to listen to me. Executives, how about you kiss my butt, okay? You don't care about your opinion anymore. And it seems like everyone is just getting more and more scared of him. Oh, man, not to mention that immediately after he realizes that he can just do whatever he wants and he has complete control over the company of Vought, he goes to Starlight, right? And he's like, hey, you know what I'm gonna do? We're gonna have a, we're gonna have a nice time. How about you, uh, instead of your little ex-boyfriend or whatever, that speed guy, mm, you don't need him. How about we bring back the deep, you know? He's, he's, he's a changed man. He's very changed in ways that he is in changing ways. She's like, no. She's like, no, I could just choose, like, the last two slots in the seven. And he's like, well, if you do that... Uh, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to force my hand. And she's like, well, if you force your hand, I'm going to force my hand. I'm going to show everyone how terrible of a person you are. And he's like, well, if you show everyone how terrible of a person I am, I'm just going to have to go full evil and millions of people are going to die. And all those deaths are going to be on your hand, Starlight. Do you want that? And she's like, no. Ugh. <laughs> it's really tense. The tension between Homelander and Starland, Starlight... <laughs> home the starlander what a weird name home light hashtag home light what a, interesting hashtags i like the social media aspect of the show a lot but there's a lot of tension between homelander and starlight in this scene specifically well throughout the entire series definitely throughout this season there's the most tension but this who was very tense i saw the true Homelander, just threatening. He just was so small. Like he he feels like a like a beetle in my hand, and I could squish him. That's what Homelander's personality is like, and he's using all this force to compensate for how tiny his personality is. And how small his character is. I like Starlight. She's such a good person. Because she goes to her ex who wants to be in the Seven. It's like one of the candidates for one of the people in the Seven. And what's fun is he still wants to be in the Seven. She's like, no, you have to. I can't talk about it, but I, you have to just like not. Please, please. Just, just stay out of the Seven. And this guy, this too good of a man, is like, you know, I'm going to join just for your support. Just to support you. And I'm like, why would you do that? That just will end your life. I don't know if he understands the depth of the situation. I don't think he fully understands. He only knows based on Starlight's word. And Starlight's word could be insane or over-exaggerated. But no. No, I just... I, I believe Starlight 110%. If Starlight was telling me... 
hey, don't join the seven. I'd be like, no, all right, I'm going to stay away from the seven. Something bad's happening in there. And I, I hope Alex gets let off easy in the future whenever he eventually dies because it's the seven. Dude, there's a bunch of t- tension and death surrounding the seven. I also do like how the boys, especially Butcher, he, they're looking for Homelander killing weapon. They go to Mallory because they learned that Mallory worked with Vought and they're like, what's what's up with this? What happened? Oh, you were specifically at the, at the same army base that Soldier Boy was at. What happened? And she tells the story about how <laughs> the soups aren't soldiers. She's running the camp. They just bring in a bunch of soups and they're just like flying everywhere, not caring at all. Not realizing that there's like enemies that could just like start shooting them. And they're just so reckless. There's like this guy with like wings and he's flying. Oh, I want to fly. Oh, stop flying, she says. That guy stops flying and then he starts flying again. And I'm like, why would you just do that? You're in war zone. You don't know where you're at, okay? Why you gotta do- be like this? But so pretty much all the soups. We're big, 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 big irresponsible in combat. And Soldier Boy seemed to be the most responsible. But, you know, he was still kind of, was kind of pompous the way that he acted. Very pompous, exaggerated, big inflated ego is what I describe him. And guess what? Because of that flying beetle super guy, a bunch of people just start shooting at them and they have to protect the base and they go pew 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 and they're this is the time to gang up on soldier boy and the soldier boy gets taketh away and that's also how um, black noir uh, damaged his face it was all gross and I saw that and I was like man I feel really bad for him is he like physically unable of talking like the the ability to talk because the part of his brain that made it so you could talk is just like ripped off or something like uh. this also makes me appreciate black noir's character a lot there's just so much complexity i see this in front of me and i'm like oh man i want to see how you got here like what led the steps that led you up to this point and also how you dealt with this. Like, how long did it take you to heal? After Mallory tells this story about how she she was where Soldier Boy was at, right? How she had any participation to do with this. She's also talking about this soup killer weapon that was, disco- that was discovered in Russia, you know? They had to take Soldier Boy to do some experiments so he can make that weapon. I do like this, right? The bu- <laughs> Billy Butcher's like, why didn't you tell us about this before? And I'm like, I don't think it would have come up naturally. <laughs> like, even she says it, it's complicated. It's complex. I'm like, in what? In how would you have a conversation naturally? They'd be like, oh yeah, by the way, I have a soup killer in Russia. You are talking about different things, like different matters are at hand. So I completely understand Mallory and why she didn't say this before. But also what's fun, Frenchie is very hesitant to go back to Russia. And he initially turned uh, little Nina down. Like, his previous, uh, as she would describe it, p- master, and sh- uh, he's a puppy, is how she describes it. It's the best way I could describe it. Uh, so he's, like, kind of hesitant, but I love Butcher. He's like, we're going to Russia. We're going there. And I'm like, I love it. You're just, like, totally disregarding Frenchie's uncomfortableness in order to execute this plan to kill Homelander because your priorities are to prevent millions and millions and millions of people from dying over the personal feelings of someone. So this is a good episode. I enjoyed this episode. It made me ecstatic for the next episode. Uh, it was it was a good one. <laughs> I, I feel like I've said what I said about this episode during saying it. I am excited to see how Starlight handles Homelander and Vought, 
how they handle Homelander. Oh, God. I just... I'm just so intrigued as to wh- how they're going to deal with Homelander. They got a sticky situation right here. They, they got a big eagle man, big force, big power, and uh, also big instability. So this is big trouble. So I got to give this episode. This episode is a solid like 7.5 out of 10. If you like this review, watch another one. The platform really likes that. If you want a fast track movie review, you can do that for $20. Read Dino's patreon.com slash ASC presents. And if you like to help support the daily grindiness of all them daily movie reviews, go to this link tree. Find the way you can help support the daily grind of all them daily movie reviews. So you can go here. And until next time, I've been Salad Sauce. See you later, my salad croutons and bacon bits. <laughs>